Well, good morning from Hong Kong. Alan here on The Bigfoot. Well, what's going on recently is I've been working here over on the port side, running the AC um, lines and a lot of DC lines, and it's slowly coming together. But again, that's been on the port side. So now I'm coming over to the starboard side, and now that it, it's it's almost December, and the temperatures during the day in the, are in the mid 70s Fahrenheit, and at, at night there it's about 60, 60 degrees, 65, 68. Um, so working down in the engine room is very tolerable. It's it's very comfortable, and but I need to do mechanicals, and that's all I'm doing is I'm doing electrical mechanicals. Now I need to do electrical mechanicals as well as plumbing. I've got to get, you know, the hot and the cold water. And so the way that I'm setting things up, um, but my first um, focus here is, is getting this head um, finished here in the next couple of weeks. It should take me about two weeks um, so far for what I've got. Uh, again, the outside... The outside, we had lots of leaks on the windows and things like that. I've taken care of that, all the varnish, getting that. So now things are getting, they're dry on the inside, which is nice. When it rains, it, it stays dry on the inside. So now I'm able to do this. And uh, my, my setup here, my goal is, is I've got to get my plumbing. So what I've got is I, I have, this is the first unit that I, I had made. Um, this is a 12-liter uh, per minute um, LTG tankless water heater. And I'm going to have this, put this in here. As you can see, I, I found, um, in fact, this was given to me uh, by a mate of mine. And uh, I'm going to put the tap in down here because the way it works is where this beam is, this is the actual deck. And uh, above this is, on the other side of this wall is the main salon, but right behind here is, is the actual helm. This is where we drive. And, uh, and below this, on the other side of this wall, is my engine room, where I have my two engines. So, I'm going to be able to put in a tap here, just the hot and the cold. And, that, and above, above the engine room, um, I'm able to go, and in this small area, I can come out with LPG. I can come in with, um, with my hot water out, or I can go out with my hot water out, and cold water in. So once we go down, and then it's just water pipe that's down here. And that's going to go here for this tap. And that, putting in a, a water saver head. It's like, a, it's a restricted, so it's like two gallons per minute. And that, and then I'll be able to come out through here and get up to my galley to get hot water from this. So this is going to heat the water for both um, the galley sink and also here in the head in the shower. And then in this area, because this is where the toilet used to be, there was just this flat wall, and a small cabinet was back here. But what I'm going to do is down here, um, what I'm going to do down here is this is going to be at an angle, uh, the, the lid is going to be at somewhat of an angle, and then another angle coming down to where this varnish, where this varnish meets. And, that, and then I can put in two shelves, and that's where you'll have your, um, you know, uh, body wash, uh, shampoo, and things like that. And I'm going to take this cabinet out. I'm going to take this cabinet out. This will be flush. I'll put in a small um, corner type sink, just enough to brush your teeth and just rinse. And I'll be right back here. And then just below that, and below that, there'll be um, a cabinet door. There'll be two um, watertight um, doors. You can buy at any like West Marine or any type of marine place. And, that, and build a cabinet back here for dry towels and things like that. But that's what I'm going to do here. But I've got to get the mechanicals back here. And in doing so, I have this up as a template. And, that, so, and that's what I'm doing today. But I've also got to work on this. And I figured I could, I could kind of give you guys a little show of a tankless water heater inside and out. Again, this is 12 liters um, per minute, which is just over 3 gallons um, per minute of hot water and I, I believe the maximum yes I, I don't believe I know it's uh, 80,000 BTU um, is what the, the heating capacity of this so now um, this this was my first unit it's hopefully it's gonna adjust um, but if you can see 
where I have it right now, because you know we're working on the boat, um, we don't have everything done. Again, it's a 1988 um, teak wood vessel here, and uh, that I'm restoring. So when I start something, you open up a whole new can of worms. You know things happen. But anyway, we've got this is a new unit. It just came in. Uh, I got it from the factory just a little while ago. Again, runs off the LPG, and this is there's a shower head. This is just where the end of the day all dirty and stinky this is where they rinse off nice hot shower but what's happened is you can see I'm because I'm outside and just a meter below that it's the ocean and what has happened and what my task is today before I get into the construction is we'll take it off um what it is here we'll set this down is this is the water heater, but as you can see, I have mine made for 24 volt DC. So this whole unit, <clears throat> the electricity that it uses, um, it uses 24 volt DC straight off of my, my house bank. But <clears throat> you kind of see down here is a black box. Well, this is the black box. This is called the ignition controller. And what it is, is I, I've had a couple more made. And that because this is all made to my specifications using their base unit at the factory we've adapted it to my needs so and again as I say don't take these things apart unless you're a licensed technician or whatever well there's my design and the factory's design and I've worked with the factory so I could say I'm pretty certified on my um, tankless water heater and that because I've got to do this because what has happened is it's being outside and as this control is where there's electricity there is heat and so what it is is you've got some air vents in here and if you look on the side here you can see there's big gaps well one thing that I overlooked is I never had them make it with tinned wire um, I just I totally slipped my mind my mistake because if it was tinned wire I would not have this problem but on the circuit board that's in here, and there's some capacitors in that because, you know, for DC to maintain 24 volts, and that, depending on how your batteries fluctuate. But anyway, uh, one of the wires that goes to the circuit board that's inside here, it's epoxied over the top of it and everything like that, but there's uh, probably about 2 mil of copper wire, stranded copper wire. One of these wires, the the salt water just corroded the salt water salt air the salt just corroded the copper and it broke and then it shorted out the board and the, the board is just because it's solid state the way that it's made and uh so it <laughs> this died and the nice thing about it is you can see there's a lot of wires that are in here and there's a lot of safety kit that's in here so if one one part of this stops working the, the whole thing it, it will not fire it will not ignite and uh, so because basically DC comes in to my ignition controller has it goes to a lot of different sensors we've got sensors that are here I've got another sensor over here which are temperature sensors um, I've got an air temperature sensor for up here and uh, and as as you know when cold water comes in when when cold water starts to flow say if you open up your your hot water tap you know what's going to happen is is cold water is going to start coming in it's going to want to go out to um, your hot water tap and that, so there's an impeller in here once that starts moving that sensor goes on it sees it this ignites it and once this is ignited this you know in the thermal coupler says okay we've got heat and that these shut off and it just keeps burning as long as water is flowing and this impeller is spinning cold water comes in goes around here and it heats up and that and then the carbon monoxide is is exhausted through the top well the way that I have it is um, I've got because what I'm using is if hopefully it shows up as you can see I'm using these 13 um, kilo tanks which is about 29 pound tanks and the bar pressure out of that regulator I don't remember it I just work with the, um, the factory on that they're the experts on that I'm not but the the bar pressure that comes out on that regulator and that this is only going to consume one third because there's a regulator as the LPG comes in there's a regulator down here I'm only going to be using probably one third maximum they said it's going to be less but 
one third of the actual pressure that, that's coming out that that regulator allows, which allows two thirds. So I can actually run two devices, um, say this, and a cooktop surface that I would like to put in the galley right over here because I'm just using these portable ones with these little butane, butane little tanks. I mean, they work fine, you know, for right now as we, I do the restoration. And uh, so it's balanced, and that, that's the important thing when you're off grid or when you're trying to be self sufficient, whatever your the thing is. It's all about planning. There's a lot of folks that I see that are on YouTube that they're just going, okay, I've, I've got, we're just going to put it in. You really got to do your checks and balances, your pros and your cons, and, and you balance your system. So I would like to be able to run this and a cooktop surface off of. Uh, a 13 kilo tank or a 29 pound tank and that and so I've, I've done it done it and the nice thing about this is this this unit and that is the factory that makes this they also make the cooktop surfaces so it, it's I, it's a benefit so I, I can get both of them and they say yes this is gonna work and that and those are the things that's the information that you need to be safe because the way the system works is I've got the regulator that comes in, I've got the different, I've got winter, summer settings, I can control water flow, I can also control the actual flame of this. So uh, it's a good thing. I've, I've got control and I've got safety, but now once the gas comes into here, when the gas comes into here and it goes into your burn box and it's heating things up, carbon monoxide is in here. Well, the majority of these other ones that you see that just are just for a shower, well, it's just, you know, hot air rises, and so does the carbon monoxide that comes out um, through with that hot air. And with the other science, with does it raise, does it fall, I'm not going to go into that. But what I've got is I've got a blower that is, it's exhausting any extra heat and any extra carbon monoxide. It's leaving this room. It's leaving the head. It's going to come up straight up here, and it's going to go out through the double wall type plate. I'm having, I have to have that made, and it's going to be stainless steel, and you know, because again, I'm on the boat. So, and it's going to exhaust outside. It will not be in here. And these are some of the safety features that are important to me. And uh, and again, I'm in Hong Kong. I don't have to worry about water freezing, anything like that. But carbon monoxide, I don't want it in here. Just like in my battery box, I don't want hydrogen. I've got a fan it, that exhaust. Once the temperature gets warm up, the poof comes in about three or four times a day. These are important features. You know, it's safety. And that, and I've got the sensor that's in here. And again, this tube goes to it. And that, and so even if you turn off the hot water tap, if you turn off the hot water tap, the flame stops. But this is still warm. So it's sensing the temperature that it's blowing, and once the temperature gets down low enough, then this will shut off. And uh, I mean, this blower has got, there's an extra little fin that's in here that's going to actually, it pulls this air that's around here, it'll exhaust that as well. And, and these are important things to me. So today, one of my projects is, is on this, I've got to replace this and set it and kind of play with it. But this is my focus. Because I believe in having redundancy. And as you can see, I've got, here's the one um, that's going to fix this one. But then I've got two more backups. And because I've got two units, I've got redundancy. And I'm on my own for that self-sufficiency, and that's what I want to do. So having that, I've got the parts. I don't need to rely on anyone else. And I just, I go in and I do it. So, again, with 80,000 BTU max at 12 liters per minute, my water tanks, I've got a 200-gallon port, 200-gallon starboard. Uh, the rainwater collection is um, 150 port, 150 starboard. Those go into a three-filter system, then it goes into a reverse osmosis system, and then that will produce 150 gallons every 24 hours. Plus, I have a water maker. Um, the water maker, which is, it will take seawater, it'll desalinate, and that goes through the, the system, and then again, that goes into a reverse, reverse osmosis system, RO water, and then that would go into my tanks. So that's what keeps our water. Um, again, the head, um, the head, it uses, uh, uh, uses seawater. It's seawater, there's no fresh water on that. So, but these are the things 
that are important to me, and it's a safety. My safety, May's safety, safety of the boat. Um, so, but the inside workings, it, it's, it's, they're, it's not rocket science. They're, they're definitely not rocket science, but you really should know what you're doing when you open these up. But they are cool. They're, they're so nice. Uh, my water pump is uh, 5.9 gallons uh, per minute that I can throw into my system, keeping it all at 40 PSI. Um, this uh, is going to be restricted here um, to 2 gallons. Um, this, the tap that I have that I'm going to be putting in it, that's going to be restricted to 2.5 gallons um, per minute. So again, you know, I'm not going to be using a full 5 gallons. But I've got the water pressure is there. Uh, I've got the actual volume. The pump is doing it. It's a balanced system. And, and that's what's really crucial. And again, at 80,000 BTUs, haha, it's endless hot water. Well, as long as you have water <laughs> and LPG. So that's what's happening here. And I've got to get uh, this in. I'm going to start drilling the holes for to get the, the pipes in. I'm uh, going to get the LPG, and then we'll start putting in the wood, and I'll, you know, finish some demo work in that here. But that's what's going to be going on, you know, in this area. So, everything should be good. And, you know, having, and this is going to be the backup, this is the newest unit. And, that, and then I can start because these LPG tanks are going to be way over in the back corner. So, again, that's another cabinet I have to build. But, you know, it's, it's step by step, and when you start into one thing, and I know I'm going to open up another can of worms that I've got to deal with, and it's, it's time consuming. It sure is taking a lot longer than I thought it would, but we're having a blast doing it, and it, things are going good. So any of those that are interested in these uh, tankless uh, water heaters, I, do your research, because there are so many different models, so many different sizes. And again, I've had mine so it runs just on 24 volt DC, and uh, which is what I want. I want to know because I've always got power in my battery bank, and that, uh, and I want to know that I've always got power, and I mean make sure I've got water, and that uh, LPG. Sometimes that gets low, and that. Uh, but if there was a way that I could get some type of hydrogen cell and use salt water. And uh, efficiency, you know, efficiently, you know, to take the water, to use the power to make enough hydrogen. I would love to see if I could get actually make that to work. But that's a, for a song for a different day. But that's what's going on in my world. So I wish everyone, uh, I know the Americans just had a, a holiday here on Thursday, which was Thanksgiving. So I hope all the Americans had a fantastic Thanksgiving feast with their families and friends. And that's so for me and I here in Hong Kong, be good, be safe, and always, always be well. Bye-bye.